Hello. In this video, we will explain how to obtain the potentials of a point charge that is moving in any arbitrary way, even accelerating, by mathematically deriving these potentials from Maxwell's equations. Maxwell's equations are the following. One, two, three, and four. So let's start by finding the electric field with respect to position and time. And the magnetic field with respect to position and time. Given the charge and the current with respect to position and time. Finding the electric and magnetic fields is easier if we, if we express them in terms of potentials. The magnetic field is divergenceless, so it can be written like this, using the vector potential A. Let's put an asterisk and a little one next to this equation so that we can remember it later. Plugging it into the third Maxwell equation, this one over here, yields So, we can, well, because the curl of this quantity over here is equal to zero, we can define this quantity as being equal to the gradient of a scalar potential phi. And so the electric field can be written in terms of both the scalar and the vector potentials. Let's put an asterisk and a 2 next to this equation. We can now plug it into the first Maxwell equation, this one over here which yields let's draw a frame around this equation so that we can remember it and move on to the next we can now plug both equations with asterisks so this one and this one representing the magnetic field and the electric field with, res with respect to position and time into Maxwell's fourth equation, this one over here. Now, a vector identity shows us that this is equal to this. So we can rearrange the terms in here like this. Now let's frame this equation too. These framed equations, this one and this one, contain all the information in Maxwell's equations but are written solely in terms of the scalar and vector potentials the charge and the current so the scalar and the vector potentials the charge and the current however they're absolutely disgusting to look at let alone work with so let's introduce the concept of a gauge transformation which is artificial changes to the potentials aimed at simplifying monsters such as these equations but that don't change the physical quantities of the electric and magnetic fields themselves. So basically a gauge transformation will just make an equation more solvable. We will use the transformation called the Lorentz gauge to simplify both framed equations a great effect. So the Lorentz gauge 
is this. As you can see, this gauge is designed to get rid of the second term in the second framed equation over here. So by plugging this in here, this will go to zero. After applying the transformation, the framed equations look like this. These are inhomogeneous wave equations with source terms where both the scalar and vector potentials are treated in the same way. The same differential operator is applied to both potentials. So this differential operator is applied to both the vector potential and the scalar potential.